Hi, this is Jeremy from The Classroom. Uh, once again, welcome to The Classroom Online Micro Lessons. Now what we're going to be doing today is running through three questions on sort preparation. Now for each question, we will be running through step by step how to approach and solve the question. So literally, if you can cut and paste our method, then by the end of these three questions, uh, you should be able to apply the same strategies um, to your upcoming tests and exams and hopefully score full marks. All right now, I hope this has got you excited because um, sort preparation questions are usually worth an average of about five marks. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. Now, before we begin doing any of the questions, uh, I hope you can, uh, I'd like you to go get your textbook or notes on sort preparation and make sure your notes, um, or make sure you have notes on the precipitation method, titration method, the excess method, and the solubility table. All right, so these can be found in the, in the chapter of salts in your textbook. So if you need to go and if you need to pause the video, please do so. If not, um, we're going to carry on. All right. Now the first question says this: um, Sodium sulfate forms a colorless, neutral solution when mixed with water. Now describe how this solution can be prepared in the lab from a name acid and alkali. Write balance chemical equations. Uh, state symbols not required. So we have to do quite a few things here. All right. We need to uh, describe. Okay. Um, and then we need to use specifically a name acid and alkali. We need to write a balanced chemical equation. All right, so you need to make sure you do um, one, two, three things in order for you not to lose any marks. Now, but before we do that, um, I'd like you to be able to recall this flow chart when you answer any salt preparation questions. All right, so when you come across a salt preparation question, very quickly draw this flow chart. All right, you start with a salt at the top. You ask yourself if the salt is soluble or insoluble. All right, and if it's soluble, you want to check if it's a spa salt or a non spa salt. Okay, so at this point in time, if you're wondering where to find out if the salts are soluble, all right, you pull out your solubility table. Uh, you should get um, all nitrates are soluble, most chlorides are soluble except silver and lead, uh, most sulfates are soluble except um, lead, calcium, and barium. Okay, and uh, most carbonates are insoluble except SPA, which stands for sodium, potassium, and ammonium. So if you go to the slide before, you want to prepare sodium sulfate. All right, sodium sulfate is considered a SPA salt. And so the method we will use is what you call titration. All right. Um, and this is where you pull out your notes on titration. And you should be able to copy down all the steps given there, something about five to seven steps. Um, but the trick here is this. Now, what acid and what alkali do you use? Okay, so let's list out the acids you have in your syllabus first. Acids, you have three. You have hydrochloric acid, you have sulfuric acid, and then you have nitric acid. Now, if you want to prepare a sulfate salt, you must start with sulfuric acid, all right? Likewise, alkalis, you need to know what alkalis you have in your syllabus, and um, the strong alkalis, you have sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. So recall, you want to get sodium sulfate. Now, therefore, you need the presence of sodium ions, and hence, we will be using sodium hydroxide, okay? So with your acid and alkali, you're just going to add uh, either in the burette, and then you're going to pipette the other into uh, conical flasks, one with pH indicator and one without, you're going to carry out titration twice. The first time to determine the endpoint um, with the indicator. Second time without the indicator, uh, using the same volume of acid added. And then you're just going to carry out crystallization, sorry, saturation, crystallization, and then you rinse, filter, and dry. So the methods should be uh, described to you very clearly in your notes. I hope you are able to find your notes and just um, read through that once and, and, and uh, just be able to produce it again in your exam. What's really important here is uh, actually deciding the method to choose um, because if you're not too sure what method to use, and then having a note, uh, it's not really going to be very helpful. All right. So once again, um, draw this flow chart. Check very quickly whether the salt is soluble or insoluble. And if it's a soluble, check if it's a spa or non-spa salt. If it's a spa salt, like sodium sulfate in this case, we're going to be using titration. Now, uh, the last thing we need to do is write the balanced chemical equation. So we have sulfuric acid, H2SO4, all right, with sodium sulfate, sorry, sodium hydroxide. You will get sodium sulfate, Na2SO4, and water. Now, the reason for this is because an acid and an alkali, all right, acid and alkali, will give you a salt and water. To balance the chemical equation, we're going to write a 2 there. All right, that's basically it. Okay, so if you're still not too sure, I'd like you to um, just pause this video, rewind, and then uh, go back once again to the flow chart and just very quickly try and figure out how I, I got to the titration method. From there, pull out your notes. You should be able to um, copy down everything in your notes or recall everything in your notes to, to get full marks in your tests or exams. Okay, so without any further ado, we're going to carry on to the next question. Now, question two says this. Now, describe how do you prepare a pure dry sample of copper 2 sulfate crystals. 
So same thing, this is a salt preparation question. Very quickly draw the flowchart. We start with salt. Ask yourself if the salt is soluble or insoluble. Once again, from the solubility table. If it's a soluble salt, check if it's a spa, sodium, potassium, ammonium, or a non-spa salt. So in this case, um, copper 2 sulfate is a soluble salt, all right, and it's a non-spa salt. So if it's a non-spa salt, we will use the, what you call the excess method, where we will add either excess metal or excess carbonate or excess base to an acid. All right. Um, so same thing, this is where you pull out your notes very quickly and run through the steps required for the excess method. Okay, um, I'm just going to cover it very quickly. Uh, you will be adding, uh, for this particular question, because it's a sulfate salt, you will use sulfuric acid. Okay, Same thing, you can use a metal, carbonate or base. Now because you want to get copper 2 sulfate, we cannot use copper metal because copper is less reactive than hydrogen, or rather it's found below hydrogen in the reactivity series. If you haven't done this yet, it's uh, it will be covered under the chapter of metals. And therefore, we can only use copper 2 carbonate or copper 2 oxide, copper 2 hydroxide. Okay, So the carbonate is either copper 2 carbonate, a base, you can either use copper 2 oxide or copper 2 hydroxide. All right, And what you will get is, uh, depending on what you use, you will get copper 2 sulfate and water. Or if you use um, copper 2 carbonate, then you will get copper 2 sulfate, carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so the products are different uh, depending on what you start with. Um, once you get uh, copper 2 sulfate, you're going to filter and you want to filtrate, which is a solution. You're going to heat it to saturate it, cool to crystallize, and then rinse the crystals with cold distilled water and dry between sheets of filter paper. All right, so what I just did was describe whatever you should have in your notes. Okay, so once again, the important thing here is to know the method, and the method can be found out, or you can deduce the method from the flowchart here. Okay, so let's move on to question number three. Now, question number three says this, you want to prepare zinc carbonate. Okay, uh, and zinc carbonate is prepared by the following method. You have zinc sulfate, you must start with zinc sulfate to obtain zinc 2 carbonate. Now, what's the name given to this method? So same thing, we start with the flowchart. You have a salt, you need to check if it's a soluble salt or an insoluble salt. All right, now for this particular question, recall most carbonates are insoluble except spa. So zinc carbonate is insoluble. And therefore, we will use what you call the precipitation method. All right. Now, the precipitation method requires us to use um, two aqueous reactants, so aqueous and aqueous, to obtain the solid, which is what we want, and another aqueous byproduct. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to show you how you can choose the uh, reactants. All right. So now we need to start with zinc sulfate as one of them. So you want to get to zinc carbonate. I always write the insoluble product here, I'm going to draw two arrows, one for the zinc aqueous, sorry, all right, and one for the uh, carbonate aqueous, all right. So you need, we've already been uh, given that we need to start with zinc sulfate, which is aqueous, all right. Now we need to find out a soluble carbonate to use so that uh, we can satisfy um, the precipitation method, which is the usage of two aqueous reagents. Um, soluble carbonates will include spa carbonates, so you have sodium, potassium, or ammonium. And for this question, I'm just going to use sodium carbonate. All right, so I have sodium carbonate and zinc 2 sulfate. When I mix them together, I will get zinc 2 carbonate. All right, um, now there's a, there's a byproduct here. The byproduct is actually um, sodium sulfate, all right, Na2SO4 for this particular question. All right, so you have zinc 2 carbonate, which is what you want, which is this solid and your byproduct which is uh, what you will filter away is sodium sulfate all right uh, to your residue you will just rinse with cold distilled water and dry between sheets of filter paper okay so i'm just going to sum this up by uh, three three points uh, whenever you come across a salt preparation question draw a flow chart all right um, and i've done this three times if you're not too sure you can rewind the video and watch it again and then from the flow chart, you need to um, know what method to use, either the precipitation method, the titration method, or the excess method. And this is uh, determined by knowledge of the solubility table. Okay. And finally, once you know which method to use, you just need to reproduce the method, um, once again, knowing the right chemicals during uh, the exams to, to score almost full marks. All right. So I hope uh, you've enjoyed this video. Once again, this is Jeremy from The Classroom signing off.